Please welcome to the stage, Cindy McCain, in conversation with Kathy Calvin. <laughs> well, hi, everybody. It is so great to be back. You know I've been involved with the Social Good Summit for entirely the in, entire 10 years, and I just want to say to the whole community, thank you. It's been a great ride, and this is our best year ever because we've made it so completely based around climate and really happy that we're all here together to think about solutions in the way forward. And we, and we could not be luckier to have Cindy McCain with us to talk about a number of issues. You know Cindy is a world-class philanthropist, humanitarian, and hero, or maybe she <laughs> and and especially in the fight against human trafficking. She's also the chair of the board of the, inter, the, um, the Leadership Institute, McCain, McCain Institute, Institute for International Leadership that's based at Arizona State University that she and John McCain founded together. And we are here just a year after your husband's death. And so many people, as we walk through the halls today, said how much he was an inspiration to them, whether they were in the service or they were in the service of our country in politics or are trying to make our country better today, as all of you are. Thank you. I agree. I agree. He's a wonderful man. <laughs> So Cindy, let's get right to it. I mean, we're here because we want to talk about how technology and digital communications can make the world a better place, mm -hmm. but it's also creating some acts of incivility. Mm -hmm. And you've thought a lot about how social media is affecting us today and how we could take some steps against it with your new acts of civility campaign. Well, uh, my husband and I both uh, worked together on, on some issues, and, and of course he had his own issues. And both of us shared a great deal about things. And as we saw the years pass, the incivility became not just huge, but, uh, but almost insurmountable, in my opinion, in many ways. And it, it bothered both of us. Uh, and we, you know, we, talked, we not only talked about it, but we tried to figure out what to do. And I just simply said to him, you're already doing it. You're, he worked across the aisle. He was, he was would listen to anybody. He was part of, of a discussion. Whether you and he lo loved a good debate too. He used to say a debate not a debate not joined is a debate not involved or not not enjoyed. Anyway, um, it's uh, it's something that a after his passing, I thought was was extremely important because you're seeing what I'm seeing, and that is a, an internet uh, that is just. It's, it's toxic in many ways. And so uh, in my small way, I wanted to create something and maybe, maybe start a movement on being, just simply being civil to each other, being, acts of civility. So uh, thank you. And you're asking people not to sign up or no. be on a website, just do it. Just do it. My, my call to action on this was, it was and is um, in your neighborhoods, in your lives, in your, in your, your work life, whatever it may be, uh, perform an act of civility. Maybe that's talking to someone that you've disagreed with or even argued with in the past. But listening is a large part of this. And, or maybe it's something in your neighborhood that you didn't like, you know, that you didn't like, but maybe you should maybe go and apologize or at least hear the other person out. Those kinds of things. It can make such a difference in our attitude, in our uh, response to things, and just it's a, it's a good feeling when you know you've done something right. Yeah, and in politics, we need this more than ever. Oh, God. You, you <laughs> must have thought about this a lot with him over the years. <laughs> Having been the brunt of it, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so is it, is it just too late? Are our partisan politics so set in their incivility? Uh, I don't think so, but I, for this reason. Um, like you and, and some other folks in here, I've been around politics a long time, and it's always a pendulum. You, know, you see, see it swing one way, you see it swing another. I believe this is going to swing back from this incivility back to an, an area and, and a time when, when we were talking to each other, when we would interact with each other. Um, I, I, I'm a big believer in the United States, so I just have to believe it's going to happen. Boy. 
So, you know, we're here at the United Nations. 193 nations are part of it. We have a lot of heads of state here this week. This is not just an issue in the United States, yeah. and it goes yeah. across borders. How do you think about that with the work that, this, that the uh, Institute does? Well, uh, our, we do have a, a very uh, robust international uh, leadership program, among others there. I, I think if, if we, in, and we have, to put this into our leadership programming, and are the folks that come join us for a year in the United States are mid-career, they come from around the world, and they spend a year with us. And if, if, if they can see us do, make, being a good, uh, a good representative, a good example, then they will too. We, we don't teach politics there. We talk about leadership. What's good leadership? Making good decisions. And in that, civility has to be part of it. It has to be. You also teach public service in a broad sense. So whether it's the young people who are striking, entrepreneurs who are starting new social businesses, we can serve in lots of different ways. How are you defining public service today? Well, it's in so many different ways now. It's so fabulous. Yesterday, I was at my place in Washington, D.C., and I, 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 you know, I was checked to see what's happening in the neighborhood kind of thing. And I was unaware that there was going to be a march for democracy coming up the road. And it was all young people. And it was, it was young people in a civil manner, you know, ta talking about, uh, chanting about what they believed the future of democracy is. That's service, in my opinion. I think the more activism that's out there and the more you can inspire others to be active in whatever, uh, whatever arena they want to be in, um, is really important. We need everyone's involvement, not just a few. Yeah. And you, you took on an issue and have had interest in it for a really long time, human trafficking. You call it bigger than yourself mm -hmm. issue. Mm -hmm. How are you seeing the progress in this? Mm -hmm. It's gone from being in the shadows and dark to being something that's much more addressed now by everybody. But where are you seeing it going and how are we doing? Um, it, human trafficking is, in, is epidemic, and it's the most vile form of, of protest against another human being that I can imagine, selling somebody. Um, but what you're seeing now, and it's really exciting here in the United States, is you're seeing a perfect storm. Everybody's talking about it. Now, maybe people don't know what to do, but we're talking about it. Five years ago, you couldn't use the word human trafficking. At least I couldn't without clearing a room when I did it. People <laughs> just run the other way. So, so uh, it's part of the conversation. I mean, I'm attending things that I was never invited to before where, where there's an interest in, in trying to find out what we can do to stop this. Uh, so, so from that level, it's very exciting, but we have a long way to go. We have a very serious domestic issue with trafficking right here in our, in our own backyard. Why is it still so invisible? Or, or maybe it's in plain sight, but we still don't see it. Yeah, I, I like to say to people, you've seen it. You know, you see it, you see it every day, but you don't know what you're looking at. And so I encourage people to look with better eyes, you know, educate yourselves on the issue and, and know what to look for, know the signs of it. The biggest, the biggest part right now and the most difficulty we're having in this particular, uh, with this particular issue is getting it into the schools. I mean, kids are trafficked nowadays at, at very young ages. And the more we can empower our children to not only know what this is, but know the dangers and all those things, the better off we'll be. The schools are still very reluctant mm. to, to put this issue in part of the curriculum. So that's a, a, one I'm working on very hard. <laughs> Interesting. So silence is a problem, and we need to break that silence. Silence is a huge problem. Yeah, yeah. So what gives you hope as you, as you look out? Here we are. We've got people in, in this city coming together. We're taking on some tough issues, and we know we have a long way to go. But something's giving you hope. But you, you radiate the kind of hope, actually, that John did, and that's, that's just so... Um, Thank you. Thank you. Inspirational to see, but tell us what's on your mind as, as, you, as you look ahead and think about where we can all pull together a little bit harder. Well, I think primarily for me is I, I have always seen a lot of hope in this country. I've always believed that, that we are the best of the best, even though we're very imperfect in this country. So what gives me hope are the young people, the, the, that group marching up the street yesterday, my own children, my, you know, my friends of my children. I, I've watched them develop into these amazing human beings. 
And uh, that, the youth is what really gives me the most hope, I believe. I just love watching them, <laughs> even when I don't agree. <laughs> so let's give everybody here a bit of a challenge on acts of civility. Sure. What would you like to say to people about the next steps they could take to help mm -hmm. this movement move forward? Well, using social media, obviously, uh, to go to your Twitter account, your Instagram account, uh, maybe talk about an act of civility that you witnessed or that you have actually done, and then hashtag it, acts of, of civility. Um, it, that it, social media is a you know even though there's a lot of problems with it there's also a lot of good on it and if we can can develop a, a, a broad movement that goes offshore I mean we could really affect change in this country and and around the world and when that pendulum swings back how will we know it what will it look like well hopefully <laughs> <laughs> Hope. I, I'm not going to be political anyway um, it just, <laughs> I, I hopefully we will see, it, especially among our leaders, uh, see a, a, a more civil conversation, see people working across the aisles. Um, I'm as frustrated as everybody else because I, you know, I saw my husband, who was the excellent example, with his friend Ted Kennedy, of what working across the aisle meant, yeah. and I'd love to see that again. And Joe Biden. And Joe yeah. Biden, yeah. yeah. Uh, Joe Lieberman, Joe Biden. Yeah. So there is hope. There is hope. And I'm a Democrat, she's a Republican, and we've been friends for a really we long have. time to make we this have. work. And, and hasn't she done such a marvelous <laughs> job? I want to commend you for all that you have done and that you do. Um, your voice in this is very important. Thank you, thank you. We all have an opportunity, and we count on everybody here to use those voices, speak up, and be bold as you can be. And Cindy McCain, thank you. Oh, thank you. And we will me. be watching and tweeting on our own acts of civility Good. going forward. Thank, thank you. you.